Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be starting with data communication chapter from your class 12th NCRT computer science book. Now, before starting and understanding data communication, let us first understand these two words independently, data and communication. So, data refers to any kind of information that is present in either textual form, images or in the form of audio, video or any kind of information that is being exchanged, that is being sent or received over the network. That is what we mean by data in, in terms of computer networks. And communication is the process of exchanging that data. So, uh, when somebody has to send the data to some other device, one device would be sending the data and simultaneously the other device would be receiving it. So, there has to be two ends to, uh, to make a communication happen. Someone has to send the data or information in any of these forms that we mentioned and somebody has to be receiving it. Somebody has to be there on the receiving end. So, this is data and communication independently. So, when we combine the two words, it forms data communication, which means we are exchanging data between two or more devices that are connected in a network. Now, these devices can either be laptops, computers, your mobile phones, your printers, speakers, any device that is capable of either sending data or receiving data or doing both. And when these devices are connected through a connection medium or a transmission medium, uh, as we say, any communication medium, whether it is wired or wireless, that is able to transmit the data or information over the network, then we say that such devices connected together, interconnected form a network. So, as you can see here in the diagram, this is a small network that consists of three PCs. Uh, one, uh, this is the first computer, this is the second computer, this is the third computer. There is a server for providing information to all these systems and there is also a shared printer. So, there is a switch for communication among these devices. So, how is data communication possible among them? So, this is a small network, okay. Uh, and why is it a network? Because different devices are interconnected. They are connected via wires. Wired transmission medium is there in this case and they can exchange data. So, a computer can send a command to the printer for printing of a document. Here, a communication is happening and instruction is being sent to from one device to another device. A computer can also request some data from the server and obviously these commands will go through the switch but communication is happening between the two devices okay so this is the concept of data communication and this is what we'll be studying in detail different aspects of data communication in this chapter so starting with data communication we first need to know what are the five most important or the five main components of data communication the five components are the sender receiver message that has to be transmitted, the communication medium or we also call it as transmission medium and the fifth is the protocols. So, we will be studying in detail about each of these five components very quickly starting with the sender and receiver. So, uh, as you can see here, this is a network again. We have a device that is sending the data. Obviously, a user is using this device to send some data and there is another device that is receiving the data and this uh, information exchange is happening say let's say in the form of emails and this is possible either via wired transmission medium they can be connected through USB cables or it is possible through uh, uh, wireless or Wi-Fi uh, access also. So basically we have a sender we have a message, we have a receiver and this message will be exchanged using some transmission media 
and some rules will be followed for this communication to happen and that is what is known as protocol so protocol is any set of rules that are agreed by the sender and the receiver before starting the communication so let's say the sender only knows english language and the receiver knows both english and tamil language so the receiver uh, would tell the sender that if you want to uh, if uh, if if you want to send a message please you can send it in uh, the english language or rather the sender would tell the receiver that i will be sending the message in english language because that is the language that we both understand so such rules this is a very basic example but there are a lot of rules that you need to agree upon before doing any kind of communication over network okay and this is uh, that is why protocols is an important part and it forms uh, and it is counted among one of the five components of data communication now let's see these components in detail the sender as i mentioned is any device that is capable of sending data over the network that data can be in any form as we previously saw and this device can be either a computer a mobile phone or any other device that is generating some kind of information and transmitting it okay similarly a receiver is also a device that can accept the data that is being sent to it okay that can receive the data or information from the network again this uh, includes any kind of computer systems televisions printers so television is a receiver because when we change channels using a television remote actually the remote is sending the signal to the television that directs the television to uh, change the channel okay so the communication is happening there also so any kind of exchange in any form okay uh, whether it is form whether it is in the form of signals whether it is in the form of light or whether it is in the form of waves that counts under data communication so we'll see all this in detail in further uh, in this chapter in the later videos as well now comes the message as i told you message is any kind of data or information that has to be exchanged between the sender and receiver it is sent over the transmission medium or communication medium and its format can be uh, like any it can be a text audio video or any kind of multimedia or voice message okay the fourth component is the communication medium or the transmission medium so this uh, component is the actual path on which the message will travel okay so this will be the link that will connect the sender and receiver and it is also known as a link or a channel okay so these are the terms that will be used interchangeably in our further lectures also so communication medium is the path uh, through which the message the data actually travels from the sender to the receiver and there can be two main kinds of communication medium uh, it can be a wired medium or it can be a wireless medium so wired medium is a physical medium like a wire that you can touch a cable an ethernet cable is an example of wired wired transmission medium and satellite links or communication using uh, waves electromagnetic waves radio waves uh, microwaves are uh, are uh, are an example of wireless uh, wireless medium okay so uh, um all right so uh, when you say wireless medium you can um, you can count air through which the waves are being transmitted uh, also as a medium and uh, in case of wired you can have different kinds of cables like twisted pair cables coaxial cables fiber optics and so on okay now coming to protocols protocols uh, as i said before also are the set of rules that are followed by the sender and receiver rather they are agreed by the uh, both the sender and receiver before the communication starts and agreeing upon of these rules is very important for a successful communication to happen okay so protocols are important so that there can be there is no difference between the 
uh, situations at both the ends. So for example, the sender is sending out data very fast and the receiver is not able to process it and receive it. And that is why at the receiving end, some information is being lost. So all this has to be agreed before only that what are the situations and circumstances under which we will be communicating so that the message reaches from the sender to the receiver perfectly. Okay. So example of protocols is HTTP, TCP, FTP, SMTP and so on. Again, we'll be studying all this in detail in the next video, in the upcoming videos also. So this was all about the components of data communication and what is data communication. I hope you have understood this topic. In the next video, we will be taking up more details about this chapter. So stay tuned till we meet in the next video. Mind your exam. Thank you for watching.